Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about predicting vapor liquid equilibrium with the Wilson equation, in particular fitting some of the parameters. We're going to use an ebullometer, which is a device that can be used to get um, va vapor liquid equilibrium data. Here you can see the A, B, C, D, E, F um, basically have a reflux uh, and also a, a heating compartment. Uh, we're going to be obtaining points on these uh, dew point and bubble point curves and then fitting it uh, to the uh, Wilson equation. You can have a positive azeotrope um, or also a negative azeotrope as well. And uh, part of the part of the issue is we're going to see if this ethanol cyclohexane mixture is going to have uh, one or the other. We're going to use the AP monitor modeling language uh, to do this. And uh, we'll start with uh, just building the model. Um, as you can see, it's just a text file. It's an APM extension. I've named this one txy1965.apm. And component one is ethanol. And then component two is cyclohexane. So first of all, I'll go ahead and start with a model uh, declaration and just declare one constant. My constant is going to be just the universal gas constant in joules per mole Kelvin. And then I'll do an end constants as well to end the constant section. I have some parameters as well, things that are going to be uh, fixed uh, inputs are specified. I've, I've uh, identified just a group, uh, groups uh, to segregate some of the data. X1 is going to be my liquid mole fraction composition. And there you can see the terms in the what's called a teenage law for uh, predicting the uh, relationship between vapor and liquid mole fractions. And then we also have two unknown parameters from the Wilson equation. I've named those D12 and D21 just to give some uh, initial values just to start. Uh, no constraints there, just uh, initial values that we want to start with. Now variable section, we have uh, you know, a couple more. We have temperature in Celsius. Now we're going to actually put that into Kelvin for the, the fitting. Um, and then Y1, which is our, uh, that, that's going to be our vapor mole fraction. And we say that that one has to be between 0 and 1, uh, just to give it some bounds. OK, then I'm going to do an end variable section. OK, now intermediate section, these are equations that are explicitly defined uh, that don't uh, add to implicit uh, solution equations. We have, first of all, our, our molar volume correlations. I'm just going to do on the A, B, C, D uh, values for both ethanol and cyclohexane. Uh, we extracted those from the Dipper database and, and just listing those th there for the, the two. AV would be A um, for this. We also have some ABCD E uh, values from the uh, saturation, saturated uh, vapor pressure as well. Uh, then we have the, uh, the equation for rho or density. And then we also have an equation for the molar volume, which is just 1 over uh, the density. And then we'll go with the standard. If you went with the standard Wilson equation, you would uncomment uh, these two lines. Uh, there's an extension to the Wilson equation, a 1965 paper that extends it. Uh, and it's, it's a little bit more accurate. Uh, we defined uh, lambda, capital lambda 1, 2, and capital lambda 2, 1. And uh, there you can see the, uh, the expressions for those. We're going to try this one uh, just to start. Uh, the one that extends that basic Wilson equation. And then we have the liquid mole fraction of the cyclohexane, which is just 1 minus the liquid mole fraction of the cyclopen, uh, of the ethanol, and then also for the uh, vapor mole fractions as well. Okay, now I'm going to break the Wilson equation into kind of into three parts. It's, it's a little bit, um, you know, it can be a very big equation. So I'm just going to define I1, I2 and I'll put them together into I3 just to find our gamma 1 and gamma 2 as you can see there on the right. Okay, so I've, I've defined uh, gamma or I1 and now I'm finishing uh, with the definition of I2 and then I'll plug in the, okay, so there's I3 negative log is just the natural log in this uh, AP monitor modeling language and then I've gonna, I'm going to define my gamma 1 and 2 um, those are the activity coefficients uh, that are defined from my Wilson e equation. Now I have the uh, saturated uh, vapor pressure. This uh, is going to have some coefficients for both uh, ethanol and, um, 
and cyclohexane and uh, here we have the expression on the right I'm just defining the constants again these are from the Dipper database uh, for those two compounds A1 is the A, con A um, constant for the ethanol and A2 is for the cyclohexane and then on down for A, B, C, D and E Okay, so once I've defined uh, all of those, I can then write my uh, saturated vapor pressure, um, and that is a function of temperature. And uh, so I've written the expression there, and then I've, I'm ending my intermediate section. I have no more explicitly defined equations. I have to go to the implicitly defined equations and start an equation section. And I write out my uh, my teenage law there uh, that relates the vapor and liquid mole fractions with the gamma that comes from the Wilson equation. Now I'm going to go over to MATLAB and uh, in MATLAB I'm going to create an M file. First of all just clear everything and then uh, load some APM libraries. Next I'm going to select a server. Another one that's available is this BYU server. The one that most people use is the XPS. Um, and then I'm going to give the application a name. So I'm just going to call it VLE. And I'm going to clear any previous application by that name. Um, and, and here I just do it with the clear all command. I, I uh, send it to the server and with the application name that I want to clear and then clear all. Then I'll load my model, that APM model file that I just created. And then I want to load my data file. And I'll show that to you a little bit later on how to create the data file. Now I'm going to go into some options. I'm just going to select a solver. This one's going to be the APOPT solver and uh, then I'm going to say that maximum iterations is 200. Uh, classify some parameters and variables, ones I want to use for the fitting. D12 and D21 are the two that I want to fit from the Wilson equation. And then also pressure and then X1. Those are going to be specified but variable over the over the different data sets. Uh, I want to be able to fit uh, temperature in Celsius and also the, the vapor mole fraction of the ethanol. Okay, now options, I'm going to turn my, tell it to read a CSV file. I want to, that's an estimated variable type. It's an, like an absolute value form. Um, and then I want to do parameter estimation, so I mode is going to equal to. I'm going to have multiple steady state data sets. Okay, so now I want to set uh, D12 and D21 on by changing the status of those two. Okay, so I've changed the status to both, uh, both to one, that means on. And then also set the feedback status for TC. And then also, I'll do that later for Y1 as well. This WMES is a weight on the measurement, how much uh, weight I want to give it in the objective function. Um, and you'll see that as well for Y1. Um, I'm going to weight Y1 a little bit higher because the value is a little bit uh, scaled down. Okay, so now I want to solve the parameter estimation problem. So I'll give it the solve command. I'll send that to the server. And then I want to be able to display the results in a web viewer. So I give it the APM web um, function call. Now I want to retrieve the data from the server. It's going to also store it in a solution, a CSV file. there in the local run directory. Uh, now I want to extract some of the data just for plotting uh, both the uh, liquid uh, pressure, vapor mole fraction, temperature, um, and then also get measured values from the CSV data. What I'm going to do is just go and open up that VLE under bar data.csv as a, a read mode, and then I'm going to parse it out, uh, parse out the CSV file. Uh, okay, so I'll go until I get to the end of the file, I get one line, um, make sure it's, there's something on that line, and then uh, increment a counter, uh, get the data, parse, parse it uh, with the comma, if, if there's nothing left, uh, then it'll break and then close the file. Now I want to see how much data I had in that, uh, in that file, the VLE data, uh, uh, .csv. And now I'm going to just convert the strings into numbers. Okay, so uh, the cell uh, format into uh, D and then be able to extract some additional values. Okay, now I'm going to uh, just plot one of my figures here. Uh, just a scatter plot. Um, I want to be able to see some of these values on it just to see if I have an azeotrope for this ethanol cyclohexane mixture and add in legend. As I mentioned before, I'm going to go back and show you how to construct the data file. Here it is in Excel. You want to save it as a CSV or comma separated value file. There are the headings with group X1, P, TC, and Y1. 
you save it, it'll ask you if you want to keep it in that format. Just go ahead and click yes on that. And then when you close it, uh, click don't save. It's already been saved. And then uh, what we're going to do is open this up with a notepad just to show what it looks like uh, with a text editor. And there you can see it's just comma separated values. Uh, fairly simple on the data file. And there's one there's one more thing we need. We need to go to the apmonitor.com website and obtain the function libraries uh, for working with the AP Monitor modeling language. I'll go to APM MATLAB interface and then scroll down to the APM MATLAB, uh, just the latest version. Go ahead and grab that. It's going to download it as a zipped archive. If you open it up, uh, it'll bring up uh, a number of example problems. You just want the first folder, uh, that's the APM folder, and go ahead and copy that and then paste it into your run uh, folder that you have. This is just a collection of a number of libraries that uh, and functions that can be used to access uh, some of the modeling and optimization capabilities. Next we're going to open up main.m, the MATLAB file that we uh, created, and then click run, the green button, and then it will pop up a web interface, and then we can see the results. There's Y1, and then also temperature with model and measured values.